We have an update on that tragic plane crash we first reported on in December of 2019, where five passengers were killed and one injured when their plane crashed shortly after takeoff in Lafayette, Louisiana. The small twin-engine jet was heading to a Louisiana State University football playoff game in Atlanta when it suddenly crashed into a post office parking lot shortly after takeoff from Lafayette Regional Airport. Authorities identified the five victims as Ian E. Biggs, the pilot, Carly McCord, Robert Vaughn Crisp II, Gretchen D. Vincent, and her son Michael Walker Vincent. The lone survivor, Stephen Wade Burzas, who was initially in critical condition suffering from burns to more than 75% of his body has since been released from the hospital, but still has a long recovery ahead of him. The three people on the ground who also sustained injuries were hospitalized and later released. Now, after a two-and-a-half-year investigation, the National Transportation Safety Board has determined the probable cause of this accident to be the pilot's loss of airplane control due to spatial disorientation during the initial climb in instrument meteorological conditions. The NTSB report also noted this summary. Post-accident examination of the airplane structures and systems revealed no anomalies that would have precluded normal operation. The weather conditions at the time of takeoff were conducive to the development of spatial disorientation. The lack of visual references and the airplane's increasing pitch attitude likely caused the pilot to become spatially disoriented during the initial climb, as evidenced by the airplane's continuing and tightening turn to the left, away from the intended course. Thus, the pilot's spatial disorientation led to his loss of control of the airplane. Spatial disorientation is defined by the Federal Aviation Administration as a loss of proper bearings, state of mental confusion, as to position, location, or movement relative to the position of the Earth. The report also included the following timeline leading up to the fatal crash. The airplane impacted trees and transmission lines on the south edge of a road. The first ground scar was located on the north edge of the road, extending 789 feet from the trees and transmission lines just 1.5 miles from the airport. Approximately six weeks after the accident, the NTSB interviewed Berzas, the surviving passenger, who stated that he had been a passenger aboard the airplane between eight and ten times during the preceding few years, and that the accident pilot had flown the airplane each of those times with no incident, further stating the takeoff seemed completely normal, but that the airplane then pitched up like the pilot was trying to get above or over the clouds. During some of the previous flights the pilot would stabilize the airplane and then climb aggressively after takeoff but during the accident flight, a harder than normal pitching movement occurred. He recalled looking out the window and seeing the ground briefly, even though the airplane felt as if it were climbing. The NTSB did not find anomalies that would have prevented normal operation of both engines. Both had impact and fire damage after the crash. Weight and balance calculations showed that the airplane's total weight and center of gravity were within limits. A truly sad update for a very tragic accident. For Parish News, I'm Flint Zerang.